Pro Tools version 12.3 has added several new workflow enhancing features. With the new commit and track bounce features, Avid expands upon the popular offline bounce workflows to make it easier than ever to free up resources and prep your sessions for collaboration, final mix, and delivery. And with the new clip transparency and also the new batch fades window, editing has never been faster, more precise, and easier than ever. This video will go over several different flexible options and ways to use these cool new features in your workflows. In previous versions of Pro Tools, it was a multi-step process to render a track down to free up resources and bring it back into a session. With the new Commit feature, it's as simple as selecting a track or tracks, choosing Commit from the Tracks menu, or just right-clicking on the track name and selecting Commit. A dialog box will appear, giving you several flexible options for committing the whole track or just the edit selection, rendering the volume, mute, and pan automation, copying the send and group assignments, as well as what you want to do with the original track once the process is done. You can make it inactive, hide and make it inactive, delete it, or do nothing. So we'll press OK and the track will start the offline render process. For this example, we chose to hide and make the original track inactive, copy the send and group assignments, as well as copy the volume, mute, and pan automation so it can be updated later at any time. Once finished, the new track is created with a single clip and a .cm suffix appended to the name, and of course the original track is made inactive and hidden. You can do this process one track at a time or to any number of tracks at once. If you ever need to go back and make a change to the original track, just show the track, make it active, make the needed changes, and then recommit. It's a great way to free up processing power or hand off a version of a track for someone else to collaborate on. The next example we want to look at is committing a multi-output drum virtual instrument to prep for the mixing process. For instance, if someone else is going to mix the session on another system. We have the VI on the first instrument track. This track also has the MIDI clips for the drum part. The next four tracks are set up to receive separate outputs from the drum VI. The tracks are routed to a clean, unprocessed subgroup bus. All of these tracks also have sends to a reverb return, rhythmic delay, filter, and parallel compression bus, as well as group assignments for a VCA master. Let's take a quick listen to the solo drums. So with the tracks you want to commit selected with Shift Option or Shift Alt for PC held down to do to selected, just right click on the Superior Drummer plugin and a pull down menu appears with a choice to commit up to this insert. This is a fantastic option to only render each track in the selection up to and through that insert point and copy the processing after that point to the newly committed tracks. Because this virtual instrument has multiple outputs assigned to the tracks we have selected, the operation knows to commit all of the tracks with the assigned outputs to the plugin. Once done, you can see all of the processing after that point has been copied, along with the send and output assignment. Also, the group assignments were copied over as well, so the newly committed tracks are still part of the original VCA master. This is a huge time saver. Sometimes when you're in the creation process, you want to quickly take your MIDI tracks and render them into the audio domain to further edit or process. With the drag and drop MIDI commit feature, this is quick and easy. First, make sure that the MIDI clips that you want to commit are on an instrument track playing an internal virtual instrument plugin. Next, place an audio track of the same width under the instrument track, then drag the MIDI clip or clips to that track. The MIDI performance of that clip playing the virtual instrument is committed to audio in a flash and can now be edited and processed as any other audio track. Commit also offers great possibilities in post-production audio workflows, and we'll focus in on just one aspect today. Sound designers often use a wide variety of processing and plugins to create interesting and otherworldly sounds. In this example, we have a flashback scene from our demo short movie, Agent MX-Zero. 
I've cut in some whooshes that I'd like to further process and enhance before it goes to the mix stage. You can see that I have standard effects tracks and also a stereo design track, which is routed just to my main speakers and not the effect stem. I'm going to use it to cut and process these effects and then render them down quickly. Let's go ahead and listen to the unprocessed whooshes that are currently cut into place. So you can see all the plugins that I have engaged are quite processing intensive. Everything from Isotope Ozone 6 to Avid's Pro Subharmonic and Flanger, which is one of the new Stompbox effects, Crystallizer from Sound Toys, and the H Delay from Waves. Let's take a listen now with all engaged. I like it. So I don't want to print the entire track or length of the movie, just this specific area in these clips. So I just select the clips and right click to commit them down. And I'll choose to only process the edit selection. And also I can choose to make the design track inactive afterwards to save the resources. So you can see that even though I've selected to keep them as individual clips, it made them into one long clip because of the long delay tails. So I'd like to still separate them into pieces. So using strip silence, I can quickly do that. And I'll also bring up the new batch fade window in Pro Tools 12.3, which offers me a ton of flexibility on what my different in, cross, and out fades are doing separately. And then I can simply drag the finished version down to the tracks where I want them to live and make sure I have a copy of the unprocessed versions available as muted clips below. Mix engineers have always wanted an easy way to be able to deliver their masters or multi-track mixes to the record company without having to give up their processing chain secrets or worry about having the exact plugins available to do a recall at a later date. With the new commit feature, this is now a reality. Just select all of the audio, instrument, and even aux effects returns and hold Shift Option or Shift Alt for PC to do to select it. Click on any of the selected tracks and select Commit. Uncheck the render volume, mute, and pan automation to keep that intact and copied to the new track. Select hide and make inactive, then commit. Once the process is complete, select all of the newly committed tracks and export selected tracks as a new session. This will create a new session as well as copy all of the audio files to a new location. This makes it easy to deliver just the committed session, ensuring the record company can open that mix in the future and make basic changes if needed, regardless of plug-in versions. If you use subgroup aux tracks in your session, there is now an extremely fast and easy way to take what is feeding them and render out stem files for delivery. Select all of the aux track submasters, then hold Shift Option or Shift Alt for PCs to do to select it. Right click on the selected track and select Bounce. This brings up a dialog box similar to the Bounce to Disk dialog. From here, you can choose what format, sample rate, and bit depth the rendered files would be, as well as select the option to create MP3 files at the same time. You can choose whether or not to bring the files back into the session, a location to put them in, and create a common name to append to each file. Hit OK and the files are rendered to the specific location, ready to be archived or delivered. Even in this short 16 minute movie, we have 197 of the 256 possible voices used for this HD native system. And if we added 5.1 audio tracks and routing for printing the stems in this session, it would easily use another 40 voices. So instead, we can use the new track bounce feature to quickly render the aux masters for each of the food groups, dialogue, music, sound effects, foley, backgrounds, the stereo crash down, and the full 5.1 print master. This is easily achieved by selecting the aux channels and right clicking on them and choosing track bounce. You can see that even for my older Nehalem Mac Pro, 
it will only take the length of the movie roughly 16 minutes to render those seven different deliverables without having to build separate routing and tracks, a time saver on both ends. Let's take a quick listen to the vocals in the chorus. And I guess you want to be the one. We can hear that the background vocals are not quite in the pocket with the lead vocal. With the new clip transparency feature, as we drag the clip, you can now see the waveform and the grid lines behind it as the clip is dragged exactly to the right spot without having to edit the front to see where it needs to go. We can also hear that the background vocal tracks have some headphone bleed. Using strip silence, we can quickly edit out the unwanted noise between the phrases. And with the new badge fades window, we can even apply separate length fades with different shapes to the start and end of the newly created clips in one quick pass. You can also store five of your favorites to preset slots and even more to the pull down preset menu. This will make editing so much more quick and efficient. So as you can see, with the flexible new commit and track bounce features, rendering tracks to free up processing, commit MIDI performances to audio, or deliver finished tracks and mixes is now a very simple process. And the new clip transparency and batch fades options make precise editing easier than ever. We hope you can take advantage of the many different options in Pro Tools 12.3 to fit your specific workflow needs. Thanks for watching.